Hello and welcome to this week's Bite Size PD. Um, we're going to be focusing this week on strategies for summary writing. So we're going to look at some teacher tips and then I'm going to share a couple strategies with you uh, and then we will um, and then I'll share a document with you that has a ton of other strategies. There's a a lot of strategies out there that we can do, um, but uh, we'll just kind of touch the very, very tip of the iceberg. Um, I'd like to start, though. Uh, you, you can see the QR code that's over here. Um, if you don't mind going in, you can use that QR code to download a um, or it'll force you to make a copy of a Google document. And on that document are going to be further resources, as well as a spot where you can take notes um, you know, as we go throughout today. Uh, so anyway, take a second, go ahead and check that out. And then we will um, come back. First, we want to talk about just the professional uh, development norms. Uh, be committed, be responsible, be respectful, be safe. Uh, you want to mute your microphone. Uh, you want to turn your camera on if you're comfortable having it on. Um, and then if you have a question or comment, you can type that into the chat. Everything, as you know, is tied to our MTSS framework. We're looking today at the evidence-based instructional priorities. And I'll go over in a second here sort of the rationale behind uh, summary writing. Um, here it is, our learning intention. The learning intention is to understand the importance um, of my typo, routinely using summarizing strategies with your students. And the success criteria is that when you walk out of this or when you log out of this, that you plan a new strategy that you're excited to use with your students to enhance their skill set. Um, when I started going into this area of looking at uh, summarizing, I was really impressed with the uh, research that I saw. And um, this was a quote right here. Uh, it says, after explicitly teaching writing skills, i.e. brainstorming and editing, summarization has the most powerful positive impact on improving student writing. Um, and that led me further to see that uh, routinely summarizing, not necessarily um, the formal kind of summary where we write a full-on paragraph, but routine, routinely summarizing, whether it's verbally or with a one-sentence summary, like we'll talk about later, those uh, opportunities to interpret and then paraphrase um, and internalize the learning um, are what uh, help our students become better writers and better writers become better readers and so forth, so on and so forth. So our agenda today then is why summaries. Um, we just kind of started with that. And then I have three tips, um, I'll have four strategies. We'll do a quick, uh, Amber and I will do a quick Q&A and then we'll just kind of, we'll sum it all up. So thanks for being here, Amber. Um, so I saw this, Michelangelo, uh, he, when he, someone asked him about how he created David and I only want to show the top part of this picture because um, it can cause some controversy, but, but um, he basically took a block of marble and he cut away everything he said that wasn't David. And so our kids are doing kind of the same thing, and we are as well when we're summarizing. We have a block of marble, and that's that you know 10-page piece or three-page piece or whatever it is. And to summarize is to gut that thing all the way down to its essence, just like Michelangelo did with David, our students do with their summarizing. So summarizing is an art, um, and like any art, you got to practice it to get better at it. Um, so for one of the first things I was hoping to do today is give about a minute or two and have you read um, this, what's in the black box here, and then um, to answer this question on the Google Doc that you opened up. We'll keep that phrase in how we can help our students to become skilled information archaeologists. I'm a huge Indiana Jones fan, so that really spoke out to me, an information archaeologist. Um, so first off today, we're going to talk about three tips for teaching summary. Um, and this will either validate or, or provide maybe something new, um, hopefully for you. Um, but the first tip is to put your students in the driver's seat. And I'll go into that in a, in a little more detail. But it's it's kind of that co-construction with your with your students about summary writing and giving them chances to be evaluators of it. The second is to provide scaffolds scaffolds and sentence frames for your students, um, and we do that quite a bit. 
um, with our structured academic discussions. But, um, and I know a lot of teachers do this very well um, with a lot of the writing. So we can provide that scaffold, those sentence frames until our students are prepared to not need it anymore. Um, practicing with writing, practicing verbally. And then uh, using low stakes writing, uh, basically it's called writing to learn, but really low stakes writing to learn prompts with our students um, throughout the day. In the beginning of the day, um, checks for understanding with our lessons. Um, these kinds of things really uh, will help get our students to get used to summary writing. And so for the first one, we have um, put your students in the driver's seat. And so really, um, this is about articulating and, and building, I think, with your students, what are those uh, attributes of a good summary? What does it take? And almost brainstorming that with your students to create a rubric of sorts or a checklist for what would be a good summary. And on the notes page, I have on the, there's a, um, a table where on the left side, I put down some attributes and I had on the right side, it's empty for you to go in there and say, hmm, here are some I think should belong there. Um, I think another thing we need to do with our students is provide examples and non-examples. And that goes for just about anything we do. So we wanna constantly be providing uh, examples and non-examples. And then we wanna to try to put them in a position where they take those non-examples and they fix them. And so it creates a uh, way where, a place where our students can play. Again, it's low stakes, they can fix it, um, they can kind of see what it should look like and they can use those as models for their own writing. Um, so I'm clicking on this and I have an example right here, uh, just something I found online, but it has the original text and you have access to this as well. Um, but here's the, the main text right here. And this might be in, in its idea, something you would provide for your students where you know, here's the main text. Obviously it's probably gonna be a little bit longer, but maybe it's not. But here's a poorly written summary. And what I liked about this, and maybe I don't like every single part of it, but what I liked about it is that it provides an analysis. And this is what I, where I'd want my kiddos to be. I'd want them to be thinking, okay, why is this a poorly written summary? And then I'd wanna be prepared to, to either brainstorm with them and to provide in case they aren't going on the right track. Um, it doesn't follow the order. Uh, of the information of the original. Um, the phrase, the phrasing isn't really paraphrasing very well. There's some sentence level problems. That's whatever. Um, it's the length is half the original. So that's not really summarizing if we're trying to funnel that down into our own uh, David. And then um, they don't give credit to the original source, which I know a lot of us are working on in-text paraphrasing. And so we still want, want to make sure we give credit. So look at this. There's our big piece right there. And then this knocks it all the way down to one sentence. And so um, that's it, that's the essence. That's the David of that piece of uh, marble right there. The summary follows the order, it maintains the tone, it's properly documented and punctuated, like, I'm not, as, I'm, as I'm misspelling like crazy. Um, approximately 20% of the length, I wouldn't hold to that as firm, but it's, it's short, it's concise, and it gets the point across. So having these chances to play and, and work alongside our students, um, those are really important for uh, teaching them to summarize and why it's important to summarize. Um, the second thing was, and, and I have a link on the uh, learning guide to even more sent, uh, summary frames, um, if that's something you, you wanna look at some more of, but, I think providing those scaffolds and frames for our students, um, we'll see also later on sentence starter frames when we talk about one sentence summaries, but here's a full on one um, in the blank title blank by blank. And this is heavily scaffolded. Um, you know, it, maybe this is the, the first time they're doing it or the second or third um, or a student who's really struggling um, to, to get it, you know, sort of, pull those ideas or figure out what's extraneous and what's not. Um, this might be a good scaffold to use right here. Um, but we want to provide these as often as possible. And one thing I've seen teachers do that I absolutely love is they have something like this on their wall in their classroom and they just leave it there. And it's, I think it's great. I mean, if, if you're struggling, if you're struggling with writing, it, it lets you actually get to the heart of what you're trying to communicate and, and while you're still practicing the craft. 
Um, and then the last, uh, one of the last tips I wanted to share was just the idea of using low stakes writing. Uh, I keep saying that wrong. Using low, t low stakes writing to learn prompts regularly. And I love this because this is about formative and this is about where kids can play. Um, our students, our 12th graders, our sixth graders, our second graders, whatever they can play around um, with uh, what they're writing. They don't have to worry necessarily right now about the punctuation that comes later, um, about the grammar that comes later, but it's about getting what's in their head onto a piece of paper. And with here, it's about summarizing. So I'm going to uh, take a second and play this video um, where Andrea Culver talks about and shows how she does this with her um, with her ninth grade students. And as you're watching, kind of pay attention to um, how she's using it uh, as a formative to kind of to guide her instruction, and also how the students can use this to, even though it's it's not um, it's not formal, their students can use this to enhance their ability to quickly summarize. So moving off of that now, we have those three tips, um, basically uh, showing examples and modeling and writing with our students. Um, and then we have the second tip, uh, which was scaffolds. And the third tip, providing opportunity to play. Uh, here are four strategies that I've seen, I've used, I've seen teachers in our district use very successfully. Um, and again, there are hundreds of strategies out there. So if you have them, great. Um, you know, share with somebody. But here are four uh, that I've seen recently uh, that really help students with with writing summaries. And so the first one, I, I used to call this chunking. And as I researched, I saw that they, they now call it paragraph shrinking. So I kind of sounded fun. But then I got to thinking about, you know, shrinking in the in the dryer. But basically, you're just chunking up a text. Um, and this is a lot. It kind of reminds me of reciprocal teaching as well. But you're chunking up a text. You might have, uh, let's say I had three or four paragraphs and you you might have your, you can do this alone, you can do it with two kids, but they might, one person might read and then the other one has to say in one sentence or less or in time-wise, 60 seconds or less, um, what's the main point of that sentence? And then they switch and then the other one reads and then they do the same thing. Um, so they call it paragraph shrinking because it's reducing that paragraph down to one idea, one essence. And so, um, that kind of a thing can really help out, um, can help out just because it gives kids another chance to kind of play with it with each other um, and so, and check each other and puts them in the driver's seat. So you might ask questions like who or what, um, what's the most important thing in this paragraph or what's the main idea um, in this paragraph. And one thing that I saw, and this is really up to knowing who your students are, but some people like to say in 10 words or less. Um, and we'll talk about shortening the words a little bit later, but 10 words or less um, really forces a student to think about, um, you know, what exactly they want to put in there. So paragraph shrinking would be one strategy that I'd recommend. Um, and you definitely want to front load this. You want to look at the paragraphs and know exactly what um, what you're going to show them. And you're going to want to make sure that you've, you've done it yourself um, so you can guide them, uh, guide the students. So first strategy, paragraph shrinking. Uh, second strategy I had is, or that I didn't come up with it, but the second strategy that I brought up, this is more for narrative. So if I'm teaching a, a piece of fiction or, or maybe I'm teaching, um, going back to like Lady and the Tiger or the lottery, or, you know, maybe I'm teaching Little Red Riding Hood or the, the true story of the three little pigs. Um, this is an easy one for students. Um, and what's cool about this is, is this can, doesn't have to be English. I could use this in science. I could just flip it a little bit. I could use this in social studies. I could use this in, in, a, in a cooking class, but I just changed my somebody to whatever the noun's gonna be. So somebody who's the main character wanted, what do they want, but what happened? So how does the problem get solved? And then what's the resolution? So I put an example from English and one from social studies. I probably should have put science, but I'll, you know, I'll put one of those in the, uh, in the learning guide. Um, but Anne Frank, what does she want? She wanted to hide from Nazis, but someone turned her and her family in. So she died in a concentration uh, camp. Then her story was shared with the world. 
So, you know, that is a very concise, brief summary. Obviously, I'm going to push the kids to read the text because a text that's that rich should be read um, and not just condensed to the summary. But if someone asks me, tell me in one, tell me in one sentence or less what this book's about because I want to know if I need to read it, I'm able to do that now. Um, King George. And again, you can see how this could be a really easy assessment to do with kids, especially if I'm in social studies and I've just talk, talked about the events leading up to um, the American Revolution. But King George, what did he want? He wanted the colonists to pay for the French and Indian War. But colonists didn't want to do that. They boycotted British goods, chucked the tea in the water. Uh, so the king sent troops to America, and then a war broke out between uh, Britain and the American colonists. And so, um, again, a quick assessment, but my kids are now having to filter and funnel and figure out what's um, basically what the most important piece is and put it out there. So this is the somebody wanted, but so then, or we can uh, we can abbreviate it or create another acronym, the SWBST. Um, I don't know. That's, <laughs> so, but again, it's best for this one's best for narratives. Um, one of my favorites is uh, reporters' notes, and so this works really well with um, narratives. It works really well with nonfiction. Um, in fact, it works really well with just about any any piece. And on the slide right here, um, I found a spot where I know a lot of our a lot of us are using Newzella um, in our classrooms, and so I found a spot where Newzella actually has a lesson plan using this strategy with two or more articles. And so you could take it and find any Newzella article that's appropriate for your students, and you basically take the template of their lesson plan and use it. Um, but the reporter's notes, um, I have it linked on here, so if you click on it. Um, and this is also linked into the learning guide, but it basically, uh, you know, it does what you would think it would do. It's, you know, who is involved, what, where, when, how, why, but this is the part I love. So what? <laughs> so we take this whole event and then what's, why do we care? What's, what's the big idea? Why is it so important? Um, the other thing I really love that, and this is, I think where the summary comes in is the most important who because they could jot down 10 characters, but who's the most important? Or they could read an article about something happening today. Well, who's the key figure in that article? Same thing with the what, um, most important where, most important when. And so then now they really have to, in a way, summarize. They're doing it right in this, this sheet. They're going from all the whys to most important why, and they're summarizing that. So now they can take that right column and we can put it down here. I've got my sentence frame up on the wall for them and they can write a summary, but they've gathered the notes using the reporter's notes. And again, you could use this with any article or piece. Um, so it's, uh, it's a, just a great strategy um, to have. The last one um, that I wanted to go over, I think, yeah, is the one sentence summary. And I know that sounds super easy, um, but wow, you want to watch the kids squirm. Um, what you do is a one sentence summary with them. So um, I call this the elevator pitch of summarizing. And so there's a, there's a technique that you can use and I've got it written here on the slide, but it's really about being explicit. So I want to teach them about this. What is a one sentence summary? Um, I want to read content specific text. I would even argue I want to read a text they're already familiar with to start doing this. Um, you know, and then get content specific later on. And then I want to do it again with my kids and show them, um, you know, I think a lot of times kids, when they, when you say a one sentence summary, so 25 words or less, and they're like, yeah, I don't have to write a lot. And then they're like, oh my gosh, that means I don't have to write a lot. <laughs> I don't get to write a lot. So, um, and it really, again, is forcing that habit. So if I'm doing this all the time and combining this with other, uh, techniques that I'm really creating that habit of being able to, to um, chop away at the marble and create that, the David that's in there. Um, and I think the students, you know, they need lots of examples and lots of practice. And I would, I would even tie one sentence summaries, I think before I started using it for assessment purposes, I would tie one sentence summaries into my writing to learn. Hey guys, create a, uh, create a one sentence summary for me based on the information I just taught you. Um, okay, well, remember yesterday we talked about this for our warm up today. Give me a one sentence summary on boom, you know, the, your takeaway kind of a deal. So it allows me to tell where my kids are, but they're also practicing. Um, again, I've got this, uh, you know, in the learning guide, but one sentence summaries uh, basically fall into, and I believe, did I not go into that already? Uh, one sentence summaries basically fall into um, five areas. You have 
uh, description, uh, sequence, compare, contrast, cause, effect, and the problem solution. So as I'm doing this with my kids, I'm going to go ahead and have this, um, this template, and I'm going to have it up on the wall for them. Again, a scaffold when they need it, it's there. When they don't need it, they can take off the training wheels and ride their bikes away. So basically description, a blank is a kind of blank that blanks, right? So um, sequence, something begins with, continues with, and ends with, and it goes on, um, so on and so forth. I've also linked in another uh, couple of um, one sentence summary uh, templates in the document. Um, and with the elevator pitch, here's some really good tips, I think, of the one sentence summary. I think having students write, um, and I kind of brought this up earlier, but having students write right after you've done something explicit, um, whether they've watched a video or like the video we did today, just about 10 minutes ago to be like, what's your one sentence summary of, um, of this lady's description of writing to learn? And now you set the purpose for viewing or the purpose for reading, and then they're going to be able to do that. Um, great, great thing to get, use again at the beginning of a lesson um, or even at the end of a lesson to gather that information for yourself. Um, I know this is a writing piece, but I think being able to talk about something, especially with somebody else before you write, is really powerful. Um, it also can be done on a post-it. Students can write and put it on a post-it note. And then again, um, I have the four uh, areas or down there, summarize, describe, uh, which is describe, uh, sequence, compare, contrast, um, show, and then problem solve. So that was a lot. <laughs> and, um, you know, just a kind of a quick, quick tip on there. Um, but if you want to learn more, reach out to myself or Leslie Morris, and we would be happy to share. I have so many resources. This is really hard to narrow it down to, to just the four um, that we did today. So. Okay. All right. Do you have any well, questions? Well, thank you. No, thank you. I, you know, my background's first grade and kindergarten, but they're developing their oral skills as well. So even just using this um, with talking about it, like you mentioned earlier, and then writing about it is just fantastic because they do have to summarize text. That's part of Common Core, even in first grade. And sometimes yeah. it's like, the main reason the three little pigs, it's because they're brothers. It's like, no, that's not the main, you know? <laughs> so having these um, tools really help a lot. So thank you so much. Absolutely.